Hi, everybody. Welcome to our fifth round table. Today, I'm joined um, by the 2004, correct? 2004, yeah. everybody. Cal Bears. <laughs> And we're going to do something a little bit different this time because um, we couldn't quite pull that 2004 film. We don't know if maybe got lost in the archives. We're not quite sure. But um, instead, we're just going to go around and do an actual roundtable and talk to one another. So we're going to start with Lindsay James, now De Alba. She was the left fielder for the Cal Bears during the 2004 Women's Call <laughs> uh, She had a perfect fielding percentage. 356 oh. batting average and career 359 hitter for the Cal wow. Bears. Yay. Pretty fantastic. Welcome, Lindsay. So what we're going to do is, <laughs> Lindsay, um, what I'd love for you to do is tell me a little bit about one of your teammates. So can you tell me one of your favorite memories um, that you have of Haley Woods? That's easy. Um, I had the privilege of being one of Haley's best friends in high school, and we ended up committing to Cal together. We not only had our signing party together, um, but we also both got like our first real, like cool adult cars. But unfortunately, Haley picked a red Jeep. <laughs> I, I think did. that sets the tone for her freshman year because when you commit, when you bleed blue and gold, you don't wear red. You don't talk about red. You don't. No. You don't do anything red. That is Stanford. That is like sacrilegious. Right. And that girl rolled into Cal with a red Jeep. Karma, mm -hmm. right? Because about halfway through our freshman season, she broke her wrist. But we love you, Haley. Thank you. True story. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So Haley had a had a red Jeep. Uh, love that. Um, I did. So welcome. We're gonna go to Haley now. Haley Woods. <laughs> Um, this season, 2004 season, 16 home runs, um, 54 RBIs, uh, 611 slugging percentage, uh, and holds a record, 191 RBIs, first uh, at Thank Cal, you. still, and to this day, welcome Haley, and Haley, if you could give me um, a best story uh, regarding Kaleo. Oh my goodness. Where do I begin? Kaleo, how far under the bus am I going to throw you right now? Please don't go too far, mate. <laughs> no. First of all, Kaleo, I love you. It's so good to see you. It's been forever <clears throat> now that you left us for New Zealand. But um, oh my goodness, Kaleo and I lived together for two years. So we have plenty, plenty, plenty of good times. But the one thing that I will say that every single time I clean my bathroom in the shower drain, when I find my brown hairs, I still think of Kaleo's black hairs <laughs> in the shower drain because that bathroom <laughs> was never clean. And I, I don't know why we never talked about it, but that's just what I think of every time I clean out my shower is your hairs in the bathroom drain. Which is funny because I'm a tidy freak now. Well, you weren't in college. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Haley. Welcome. Love the story. Kaleo, it, now a Kiwi, Kiwi in New Zealand with the Kiwis. Uh, Kaleo, starting center fielder, second team All-American that year, led the team in on-base percentage, uh, 447. Uh, Women's College World Series champ in 2002, I believe, as well. And um, seven home runs on the year. So Kaleo, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Okay. Thank you for being here and joining us. Uh, Kaleo, give us your best story um, regarding, let's see, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, Chels. Well, we've got a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, but she was the one that basically took me in when I first went to California, her family. And um, basically it was the time that she was like, you're gonna grow up and um, gosh, I'm so nervous. Like I can't do this, <laughs> sorry. Um, she helped me basically get started um, away from my family. And we did a lot of crazy but fun stuff together. And Chelsea and I always had each other's back, so. Um, yeah, I mean, she's like, a, she's really like my sister, my California sister. 
what I tell people. She's always yeah. said that too. <laughs> hey, you are. You are. Kaleo, where are you right now? Well, I'm actually at work in the lunchroom. What's <laughs> that behind you? Sorry? Is that shoes behind you? Yes, it's a whole bunch of stock behind me. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for joining us, Kaleo. All right, now we're on to Chelsea Spencer. Chelsea, 2004, let's see. Um, all pack 10, hit 326. Um, also, uh, NFC All-American as well. And now, full circle, the new head coach of the Cal Bears. <laughs> so, Chelsea, welcome. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I think I speak for most of us around the world. Super happy that you're back at Cal. Um, Tough to see you as an Oregon duck and then uh, in burnt orange, really odd. <laughs> Bless <That's you>. super. <laughs> super happy that you're back in the blue and gold, but uh, thank you for being here. And Chelsea, give me your best story um, that you have with Kelly, Kelly playing behind Kelly. You know, first off, thank you for having us here. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, we love what you're doing for softball right now. Um, I completely agree with you that our history is a little lost um, as, as uh, softball uh, student athletes coming up. But my, it's not the best. Oh, okay, God. Kelly, right? And we were just watching the game, and I swear ESPN had her gunned at 62. And it's, I don't think you were 62, were you? You had to have been like 66, because. Oh, no. <laughs> No? Yeah, yeah, yeah talk about it. Yeah. You know some no. in practice at a... 66 <laughs> is a stretch, so that's a stretch. Yeah. You Thanks, Haley. <laughs> I'm going to say 64. 64. All right, I'll go say 64. That's 64. Yeah. Okay. Well, 64. I, Kelly Anderson, I, I always talk about this when I'm talking to pitchers because, you know, growing up, all these pitchers now are like, oh, I have a curve and a rise and a drop and a change up, and I'm like, no, you don't. Um, like, I really want your most dominant pitch and off speed and maybe one more. And I always um, talk about Kelly's drop in and drop out. They were so pinpointed in and out that they, 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 they became like two different pitches. I mean, your location and your dominance of those two pitches were just unbelievable. But what I was going to talk about was when we called a rise ball. Oh, Jesus. To Claire Sua. That's Haley's fault. And Haley called it in the middle of it. Haley called the rise ball. <laughs> and I was like, no. <laughs> <gasps> and I'm yep. still up in outer space somewhere right now. But no, yeah. man, I, I think the dominance you had in the circle um, with the locations that you had is, is something that uh, the, the youth needs to look up to because your changeup was just amazing too. So. Um, that's what I got on Kelly Anderson. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Chelsea. All right, now we're on to Kelly. Kelly, all women's college world series team. Uh, big wins against Oklahoma and LSU. Uh, still have seven no hitters. Second behind Michelle Granger. In, uh, Way behind. <laughs> <laughs> she only had like 25. <laughs> 25 and nine on the season with a, a 1.43 ERA. Um, so pretty impressive. Uh, and talk to me about, let's see, uh, give me a good story about your relationship with Ronnie. Hi, Ronnie. I haven't <laughs> seen you in forever. Thanks for having us, Tara. Um, you know, Ronnie was, um, you know, the first baseman. So she, I play right next to her. She had an awesome work ethic. Um, you know, and she brought a seriousness yet funny tone to everything. And I appreciated that. She had a very good balance um, of that. And it showed in her work ethic and, and on the field. So I love playing with her. Um, thanks, Carol. <laughs> thanks, Kelly. Uh, Ronnie, welcome. Yeah, thank you, Tara. How are you? 
I'm good. How are you? Thanks for having us. You're so welcome. All right. So, um, Ronnie, you registered in 2003. I did. Correct. And you transferred from Sacramento State. I did. So you played two seasons at Sacramento State. Mm -hmm. And then you're at Cal. Um, 982 fielding percentage. Pretty good over there at first base. Yeah. Um, and uh, talk to me about what that transition was like. I'm going to do two questions for you. Talk to me about what that transition was like from Sacramento State, because you're our only transfer on here, um, into Cal to be with all these uh, these teammates. Yeah, with these superstars. Um, <clears throat> so I was originally recruited by Cal um, out of high school. Um, but at the time, I was pretty unfamiliar with, like, the commitment process. Um, so I had originally – fully committed to Sac State, not knowing that I could rescind the commitment and actually choose Cal instead. And, um, but I was loyal to Sac State. I went with them. Um, I stayed with them for a few years, but I quickly realized that it was not the program that I was looking for in the direction. And I called up a uh, um, coach and she's like, yeah, we'd be happy to have you, but you're going to have to work your ass off to earn a spot. And I respected that about her. And because she was brutally honest, and uh, um, and that's something that I really appreciated about her. And once I got to Cal, like it was an amazing experience, and the girls there, like everyone there, were amazing athletes and superstars, but yet so humble and modest. Um, I think you know people can I think assume that when you're playing at that high of a caliber and you're that good, you're going to be a jerk. Um, but everyone was amazing and I had a great time. So. I mean, I could have been a jerk at times. I'm going to raise my hand. <laughs> I'm a lot more humble now that I have these student athletes who have given me a lot more back times 10 now. And I realize maybe I could have been a little bit more humble. Yeah. No, I think we all have like our jerk, like, and I hate to like, um, talk crass, but like, we all can be assholes at times, but you know, that's just part of like who we are and, um, and who we are as people. So, but I think like at the end of the day, like we, we all showed up, did our work and we weren't jerks about it, you know, and we all took care of each other. We all supported each other no matter what, which is what I really admired about this team. Thanks, Ryan. And tell me your favorite memory of Alex. Oh, God. <sighs> uh, <laughs> Alex is probably the one that I, like, least knew on the team because she was so funny. <laughs> I was little. <laughs> um, God. I remember, like, her love of country music. Um, <laughs> Go uh, I don't think I ever listened to that much country music in my life. <laughs> oh, but, uh, cowboy. Yeah, she was a total like straight like pure country, and uh, but no, it was awesome. It was awesome. Like she exposed me. I now actually listen to country. Like I, I really appreciate that music. So I have Alex to thank for that. But um, but no, she was an amazing player, and she had. She also had an incredible work ethic and she had this quiet determination about her and um, there's so many players that looked up to her. So and she was an incredible teammate. So mm, thanks, babe. Yeah. Thank you, Ronnie. Sorry to put you on the spot like that. I'm just going yeah. around, you know, just around the whole Zoom call. Yeah. Uh, but, all right. And then Alex, uh, 245 on the season and started almost every game. Um, Played 63 games uh, for the Bears. Alex, welcome. Thanks. Hey. Good. Thank you for being here. I'm happy to be here. This is awesome. And so, Alex, can you give me your favorite memory um, of Vicky? Oh my gosh. Yay. Um, <laughs> honestly, there's so many. I was really super lucky to play on Strike Zone with her. Um, and so to say that I looked up to her would be an absolute understatement. Um, and then honestly, just throughout my entire, sorry, I have like a fly, <laughs> um, like my entire softball career in terms of like actually pursuing, going to college, playing competitively, she kind of just like led the way. Um, 
she took me under her wing. She taught me so much, um, whether that be on strike zone, but then also just that cow. She just, she has such an intensity about her, but she just like plays it off with this like little, like, you know, um, I don't know, just this awesome joy about her that just, it made you just enjoy playing that much more and work that much harder just because I mean, she was like one of the hardest working people that I had ever played with. And yeah, it was just awesome. She's great. Great. Alex. Thanks, Alex. Vicki, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Vicki Galindo Paya. Yes. Got it. <laughs> Nailed it. Nailed it. Played for, played for the Bandits, correct? Pro League. Mm -hmm. Olympian, All-American. Um, you lead the team in lo loads of categories, uh, 374 average, uh, 83 hits, 18 doubles on the season, 53 runs, uh, all women's called World Series uh, team as well. And yes, I could say even playing against you, you always had that bright, really great smile and great energy about you. Um, so welcome. Um, and if you wouldn't mind, can you tell me your favorite memory? Um, uh, playing with Christina. Yes, yes, this is, this is great. I was hoping for Christina. <laughs> it's, oh no. It's four face, it's four face. Good old four in the circle. <laughs> oh, oh man, I, um, I have lots of great memories of Christina. She, she definitely was unique. I feel like Christina like 100% represented what Cal softball was. Like you come in and you be oh. yourself and you just, you know, you get to embrace the person you are and play the sport that you love. And she came in um, and did that. You know, I, I remember a couple things. One is I always remember her makeup. You know, she had her game face on, right? And that was, you knew she was ready to go with that. Um, I, you know what I remember, Christina, is um, as I'm talking about this, uh, of like, um, I remember going from, I don't know what year it was, either freshman to sophomore year or sophomore to junior year, you decided that you wanted to put on like some muscle, right? Wasn't that, was that, am I mistaken? Was that? I don't know what year that, I think that was always a goal of mine. But you did <laughs> I don't know what year that was. so strong. And I remember her working so hard towards that. And that's something that um, sticks out to me. I remember, it's weird. We're talking about things and it's like, that's, that's one of my memories is just you, you deciding you're going to do something and then and you did it you know and um you know she always just worked so hard in the circle she's always trying to work on perfection you know and she just had the best spin her ball jumped her rise ball was definitely um a pitch that she mastered during uh college i think after college you worked more on your drop right didn't, didn't that come later or am i crazy? That kind of <laughs> when i started having wrist problems that's when my i had to develop drop that's it. But yeah, it was always so fun to have Christina in the circle. You know, I, I, at third base, I'd get the ball and hand it back to her, you know, high five her. And I just remember, yeah, Thor face. <laughs> I loved hearing that. <laughs> and her death metal you song. say that to her? All the time. <laughs> that, that was my name. Thor face. She'd give yep. him the Thor face. <laughs> <laughs> there was two words in between Thor and face that I would yes. use. So. Yes. You know, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was just Chelsea, though. That was only Chelsea. You were the only one who used that. Are you going to tell us what those two words are? Or is it not for? Not a chance. <laughs> it, it's, yeah, no. <laughs> not a lot. Okay, good to know. All right, thank you, Mindy. <laughs> thank you. Oh, my goodness. All right, Christina, um, welcome. Uh, thank you. So this year, 2004. Uh, 28 and four on the season, the 0.87 ERA. Wow. Yeah, seriously. Uh, pitched every inning at the regionals, uh, Nebraska regional. Do you remember that? Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, you know what I remember in the Nebraska regional? Uh, it is raining cats and dogs out there. We're from California. <laughs> And you all are from California. Okay, yeah, you're right. <laughs> but this doesn't happen in, in Washington either. And it's like, boom, boom, lightning, okay? And then I look out. I don't know why I'm in the lobby. And I look out, and Christina Thorson 
is out there, earrings and everything, looking at the lightning. Like, <laughs> it was an awesome looking storm. I thought she was going to get it. I lightning. <laughs> I was nervous. Anyway, keep going. I'm sorry. That's all right. <laughs> uh, and most outstanding player honors. Uh, career wins, 102, uh, which is fourth in the record books. And then saves, you had 12, which is first in the Cal record books. Uh, innings pitch, 868 while you were there. So a lot. Um, welcome, Christina. Thank uh, you. My brothers would be really jealous if they do that. <laughs> there have been. We'll tell them hello. I will. Uh, and Kaleo, too. Um, Christina, can you tell me your favorite memory of Lindsay, uh, playing with Lindsay? I'll tell you my first memory. She was the first person I met on the team because she lived directly below me with Haley, I believe. Yep. In the dorms. But I don't know where you were, Haley. You weren't there. You were like, you were out Gone. or something. But it was my first night there. And so I didn't know anybody, but somehow I knew that you two lived below me. And so I walk in, and I think you were still kind of like getting everything organized. And you were like a hot mess, Lindsay. But Always. you were you were still like so welcoming, like I had no idea who I was. You're like, hey, you're like, I'm just doing this. And then like, but yeah, it's like from the get go, like we hit it off. She was so warm and inviting and just down to earth. And like, it was the perfect introduction for me to Cal softball. Oh, yeah. Great, thank you, Christina. <laughs> Can I have everybody. Oh, and then when we, you remember senior regionals afterwards where we dressed up like each other? And we switch places. I just looked at those pictures today because I couldn't find one picture of me in a uniform. I'm like, thanks, parents. Yeah, right? Yes. That was a fun time. I forgot about that till just now. <laughs> you dress up at each other on the field? No, it was like after the regionals or something. I don't remember. Was it regionals? Was it senior day? Something. But I had like a pink leopard print tank top on or something. And she did my hair, and I put, like, my black eyeliner on her and some black shirt. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about this black eyeliner, because I know about the black eyeliner, because I've seen it, and I faced Christina, and it was scary when you're up to bed. Like, oh, my gosh, she means business with this black eyeliner. So who can tell me, like, Christina, talk to me about this process. Like, the eye black is now the big thing. Oh, Haley's raising her hand. The eye black is now this big thing that goes like this. I feel like you are the pioneer with the war paint, with the, the eyeliner. Okay, hey, Haley, Haley's got her hand up. Let's hear it, Haley. I had the privilege of being Christina's roommate for three years in postseason, and that eye makeup was art. That was a process that began around six o'clock in the morning and continued <laughs> in stages around her workouts in the morning throughout the course of the day from breakfast to lunch to bus to whenever it was Christina and makeup. So if anyone can attest to it outside of Christina, I feel like I am most well equipped for this. I think we need to also uh, touch upon uh, her nickname that ESPN gave her. What was the nickname? Goth girl. Oh, the one that Bully is obsessed the with? The glove? Yep. Goth girl. Yep. <laughs> And, and I wish we had the evolution of Christina Thorson from the first day she stepped on campus, okay? Mm -hmm. it, she was this Seattle girl pale, but her hair wasn't mm -hmm. black. It was brown. And like, okay, Coach, Coach I mean, Coach um, Neidmeyer brought in this girl who just was like, okay, I thought. And then I'm like, oh, my God. She, she gets in there. She gets in the spring, and then she's striking everybody out. And I'm like, oh, great, Coach Neymar. That's a great recruit right there. Thank you for bringing her in. <laughs> but, oh, man, she became just someone that I never thought she would have. And I've always told her this. Like, she had just brown hair, and all of a sudden she became this monster on the, in the circle. It was awesome. So, Christina, now we're going to let you speak. <laughs> <laughs> 
what what tell me about this the makeup what was your your process and what 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 did you kind of what was you were you going through when you were putting on this makeup and why did you, why did you start doing it was it something you started oh, too young it, or just in cow no well so my pitching coach growing up I didn't wear makeup in high school but he always talked about like a game face like you have to have your game face do all this so I had like warrior braids that I would do in my hair and that just got to be too much and I was like, so over it um but like I took the game face thing very seriously like I had my facade I was very um like stoic on the mound show no emotion and so we were in Columbus Georgia at that big fall tournament or sorry like preseason February tournament, it was freezing. And we had like five hours stuck in the hotel between games. And I was bored out of my mind. We weren't allowed to leave. I don't think we were in the best area. So I just did my makeup and it wasn't even black. I think we were wearing our grays that night. So I just did like navy blue and gray makeup and I threw amazing. I think we were pitching, playing against LSU or something. And it was like, I don't know, ridiculous. I was like, oh, well clearly the only reason I threw well is because of the makeup. So it had to stay. And then it just kind of evolved like oh if i'm gonna do makeup it should be dark and intimidating and then it just kind of stayed <laughs> and i can attest that it, it was dark and intimidating to be <laughs> honest <laughs> that in your warm-ups i'm like what else is she gonna bring out of her <laughs> my toy box <laughs> it was like frisbees and like color it was like circus over there and i'm really yep. like what is she what is happening <laughs> you had the death metal like warm-up song too duh yeah. always what is that <laughs> all right so since we don't have the game we'll talk a little bit about it um why this team is so special for cal and um you've gone to three consecutive women's called Rolex series titled games you've won in 2002 uh, runner up in 2003 and then again in 2004. Um, so this 2004 game was a tough game leading through five innings. Um, and then I think we talked about that Claire Sua bomb. Um, that was, that was, is still going, look at Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about um, this game. So in the first inning, Lindsay, you score. Do you remember scoring in the first inning? Only because I looked it up online. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I looked it up and I was trying to find a picture of myself. I'm like, oh, good. I finally got on base during the World Series and scored. Yeah, I scored first. Yeah, the first <laughs> inning. Yeah, um, you walked, right? Lindsay walked. And then um, Haley singled through the left side. Um, and then base hit by Jessica. Mania. Okay. AP. Yeah, so scored in the first inning. Um, no, talk to me about, Lindsay, talk to me about um, the rivalry with UCLA or this second year, because we've spoken a little bit about how this kind of shaped your, your um, outlook on, on re failure recovery and, and losing that, you know, second time in a row um, in the title game. So how has that kind of impacted you? And, and can you speak about that, that game? I can speak about the game. Um, I can actually give you my perspective on it moving into being a mother. Okay. I'm sure everyone else will have different perspectives um, about coaching and all these other things. But I think um, my takeaway from these games, and especially losing, um, I have taken it really deep as a mom and a mother about how I'm going to raise my children. Um, I get a lot of flack from some of my girlfriends that weren't necessarily athletes, because if it's a board game, if it's a sprint up a hill, any type of game, 90% of the time, I'm not going to let my kid win. Um, <laughs> It, you know, and the reason why is because of this. I felt like it took me so long to recover from such a devastating loss. It's something that you work your whole life for, um, and it's the pinnacle. And then all of a sudden, you have this athletic hangover 
where you just don't really know your next direction. And for me, um, my biggest takeaway was how I'm going to parent my children. I'm going to let them lose 90% of the time. I'm going to break it down. I'm going to give them um, skills and give them um, the knowledge to be able to think about loss, overcome, and how to move forward. Because dang, it is way harder to lose than it is to win. That's my two cents. <laughs> Thank you, Lindsay. Um, and hopefully there's a lot of moms out there that are probably can relate to that. Um, I think I saw a video of you beating, <laughs> um, I think it was your son, you're racing up the hill. So I can attest to say that that's still true. All right, Kelly, what are your thoughts? I was just going to say, Lindsay, I agree. I don't let my kids win at all because I get too competitive and my husband and I do that too. But, um, and so, <laughs> you know, the, the, for me, because I went straight into, you know, law school after and you went to a professional, um, you know, business that I can really tell when someone has an athletic background in the professional world because of the way they handle themselves and, and face adversity and come back. Um, and so I think that overall, not just this particular game, but, but everything really teaches you just for life in general, whether it's being a mom or, you know, doing your job and whatnot. I think that, um, you know, losing is an asset, although it's tough. Um, you know, it really, it really helps shape you as a human being and, and to be a good person later in life. So. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Um, Vicki, Vicki's got her hand up. Let's hear it, Vicki. Thanks. It's, it's interesting because it's, it's like when you think of failure, the way that our minds work, it's like, oh, you failed. And we think of it as, as a negative thing. But the, in reality, if you change the way that you see that word and you see you view failure, I know for me, it's, it's, you know, you didn't beat me. I just need to make an adjustment the next time. You know what I mean? And, and you grow from that. And if you change the way that you see that word, um, you know, then it changes your perspective on, on how you see failure, right? So if I, you know, like the, the anxiety and the stress that comes from, from all those things, if you just know that it's coming and you change, um, a, you know, your mindset and say, it's okay, like, this is what I'm going to do next time, you know, so it's, I think it really is a mindset. Alex, do you want to add in anything to this? Yeah, I think too is, um, realizing at least like for parenting like on my on my end is just making them realize that failure happens all the time and if you're doing it right then you're failing because that's the only way that you're going to be able to move forward and be better right which is which is our goal in life as people in your profession and whatever you pursue with passion is you're gonna fail and that's okay but I feel like also paying more attention and not so much on just like, dang, you didn't meet your expectation. Yeah, that sucks. But on the flip side, it's like, well, what do you get to take with you that you wouldn't have if you didn't experience this? What insight, what lessons are you going to carry with you into like your next failures, you know, that are just gonna, I guess, like snowball in a good way, the other direction. And I think that's something that, the in framing it that is the perfect way to kind of to to teach not only kids but um future athletes so i think it's when Lindsay and i were talking i we we've had all the winners on um and you know it's great and everybody's talking about how great it is to win but there's that part of our game that you're also there's a lot of times that we all fail i mean we're gonna fail if we're good seven times out of ten um so thank you for that and um, last, oh, Chelsea, let's hear what Chelsea has to say about this. You use this as a lesson with your current teams. You know, you, there's this, um, podcast, uh, I, I've made a couple of my teams listen to, it's called building championship mindsets. And, uh, she talks about building blocks, um, one through eight. And I forget which episode it's in, but she talks about fail. Um, as your first attempt at learning. Like it, it's a, you know, and, and I, I really think that's important to, to know that, you know, learning is failure. 
But with this game, I getting back to back by UCLA was so hard on me uh, personally. Cause all my except for Kelly, I'm looking at this and Kaleo, we're on a a, a a Zoom with people who didn't get to win the national championship. And I felt so upset and, and let down that I didn't take care of my teammates. And I'm looking at the box score right now. We out hit them seven to two. And I'm like, how did that happen? No airs. And we, you know, it's just one swing of the bat, you know, and, and, you know, it, it is what it is, but you, you, you always. It felt great. And and, and mostly because I was, happy and relieved for Jocelyn. But I just, this one was just hurt because I, I know I didn't take care of my teammates. So Chelsea's going to take the loss all on her, on her own back. <laughs> Thanks, Chelsea. <laughs> I just, that's how I felt after. And then there's a fire in the background because fireworks were flying and then it caught on fire. I'm like, let's get out of here. It's like, 2020 all over again, right? Like mayhem. I'm like, let's go. I'm, I'm out of here. That's right. So the fire, they had fireworks after the game and then the whole lawn is in left field. Yeah. Like a center field, left field catches on fire. I'm like, that's how I feel right now. I can't all believe right, we so all hit them seven to two and we still lost. Was that, yeah, the, same, was that the same year that we had the tornado and we had to like hunker down in that storage shed? Was that the same year? Probably. That was the, that was the yeah, kitchen. That was the year. Year. What year was that way? When you're in Oklahoma. Yeah, the hotel we were having to go into. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were in the hotel place. kitchen. Yeah. yeah, or something. But I remember we had to hunker down in the storage shed with like all like the rates and everything. And I'm like, this is yep. like the worst place to be like hunkering down. Well, and Rodney Rod was on the 2002 team too. I, I forgot to say that. But how does that make you feel? Did it make you feel that we didn't do our job? Yeah, it sucked. Mm. You know, being runners up like two years in a row, like you just, you felt like something was missing. Um, and like, you felt like that you let the team down and you let your team, um, yourself down. But I think if anything, I really learned the value of resilience from this team. Um, and from the losses, like we were, for me, I really took something away from those losses. Like as hard as they were to swallow, um, they really taught me, just like grit and resilience particularly in my job right now as a police officer it's probably the most challenging time to be a police officer mm. um, I'm angry I'm frustrated by the events right now and what's happening um, but I know I have the resilience to get through it and primarily it's because of being a Cal softball player so and I have you guys to thank as well for that. So. Can you add something? Yeah, you know, um, I think, so in my career, I have a lot of runner-ups. And um, I think it, it, what, what happens in our sport, especially when you play a team sport, you know, you, you have to, it's, it's a lot about accountability, you know? And so if you can leave the field and you can and leave saying, you know what, I left everything out there and I did what I needed to do. And, you know, I think those are things, those are the, the takeaways that can help, help you move on, right? Um, you know, and of course, there's those moments, you know, I, I can't tell you how many times I've cried over softball, you know, like ugly cry. <laughs> and it's just, I mean, that, that's our sport. Um, you know, and, but like I said, if, if you do all the things that you, you are supposed to do before that moment and, and, and then have the, the knowledge that sometimes it's not going to go your way, way or also understand like, well, if I leave it all out there, you know, that's all I can really do. I think that's, that's a great way to deal with, with um, these types of things, you know. Thanks, Vicki. Um, and talking about the tornado or the shelters and the hotels and I mean, some of the best times were off the field, like, you know, 
hunkering down, it's pouring rain, we're playing at like three in the morning and, you know, but that stuff is kind of what you remember most. Where did you all stay in Oklahoma City? Do you remember the hotel? And what did you, what was your pregame meal? Um, oh, here we go, Kelly. Can I just tell you, I don't remember the name of the hotel, but I went to Sonic the other day. And I remember, cause we, well, it was right next to the hotel and we went there all the time, or at least I did. I think it was uh, the Nag, Marriott, I think Nag, Kelly. Nags the went Marriott. there. Okay, well. <laughs> I totally remember that. It's so random. And so I was telling my girls the other day how, how we went to Sonic all the time because it, you know, wasn't in California. I don't think Sonic was in California back then. Wow. And now it's, you know, we have one here. And I just, I remember that. Not that it was a healthy meal, but we'd get the birthday cake shakes and the, and the hot dogs. And <laughs> that was always fun. Lindsay, like, why did we not have anyone telling us, like, hey, maybe you should eat this before a game. Maybe you should eat this to recover. Like, I was 20 years old. I probably, like, played in the national championship game after I ate a bag of Cheetos. Like, help a sister out here. Like, how do I feel my body? Like, this is the stuff we don't talk about. Like, my game was driven by Cheetos. <laughs> so you didn't have a nutritionist back then? Yeah, no, there wasn't. Lindsay, you were one of the fastest kids out there. Like, you're Cheetos. Cheetos. So, Lindsay was... And Alec would come to practice after, or while eating a La Burrito burrito, <laughs> and go to practice like it was nothing. What were the best places uh, around campus that you guys would all go to as a team? Like, what were the best food places, and are they still there? Mm -hmm. Elsie, I think you and I went to Rayleigh's all the time. What? Didn't oh, we? like really is the bar. Intermezzo. No, 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 no. The, the salad place next oh. to the bar. Intermezzo. Oh, that Cafe Intermezzo. That one. that one. Intermezzo. I think you That's and I there. live there all the Yeah, it burned down. Mm -hmm. It's there now, though. It's called Mezzo. Oh, oh nice. They rebuilt it. Awesome. I enjoy the top dog. I loved Ivy Hoagies. Oh, yeah. So Steve, uh, Gypsies, where we took every recruit. Gypsies. Oh, yeah. Gypsies. Yeah. I went there last year when we went to the football game. It was awesome. Those calzones oh. are like as big as your head. Yeah. <laughs> so plenty of food. So as a recruit, so when recruits come to Cal, I mean, now we've got the head coach with us. So um, when recruits come to Cal, talk to me about uh, the stadium. It's going to be Built brand new, you're looking at a new stadium, correct, Chelsea? Um, 1,500 seats? 1,500 seats? Yep. Uh, new press box? Yep. Uh, field lighting, permanent seating, covered batting cages, a video board, locker rooms, restrooms, um, and then a really cool elevated press box, architecturally. Um, I saw renderings. It's pretty cool. Um, Chelsea, can you speak at all about um, the progress on that? Is it still on its way? It's on its way. I, I think Cal, along with most universities right now, are on hold um, due to the COVID crisis. Um, we're going to figure it out. I haven't been in, in the office quite yet. We're not allowed to go. You have to get like ushered in by security. Um, but also, it's also tough uh, because of um, you know, the neighborhoods in Berkeley, you got like tree sitters and you got like legal issues you really got to, you know, deal with. So um, it's on hold right now, but it's, it's, it's coming in in the next two seasons for sure. Great. I mean, it's beautiful to play there. Uh, what's the canyon that it's in? Strawberry Canyon, the most beautiful place in the entire earth. Uh, I told like, my Oregon team, I'm like, it's beautiful there. Just watch. There's going to be deer on the hill, right? And they're like, yeah, right, coach. You're crazy. I'm always crazy. I'm the crazy coach. We're, so we're sitting there, and we're in first base dugout because that's where the visitors are. And I'm like, look right there. There was deer on the hill at that very moment. And the girls were like, oh, wow. Like, it is the most beautiful place to play. Um, and with the addition of this new sta stadium and, and facility-wise, 
that's going to be so nice not to change your clothes in that closet we had to change our clothes in <laughs> and store stuff but you know it's it, it's something that uh, Jim Dalton our, our AD he's a great leader um uh, you know we're hit with a crisis now but it has slowed progress but it, it's not going to take long for us to to get back uh, to where we need to be Chelsea, remember when you became a senior, you got the front hooks and so you had to <laughs> shove your stuff in the back corner? <laughs> I don't know. Kaleo, did me and you, as a freshman, clean everybody's cleats one time? Was it you and me and Coach Nightmeyer? It was somebody. And we cleaned everybody's cleats because Coach Nightmeyer wanted us to do it. And then we used the cleaner that made spots all over the cleats. <laughs> And it really messed up everybody's cleats and they were so pissed at us. Oh my God, it was hilarious. We tried to do something nice and then we just messed it, it all up. up. Eh? <laughs> all right, speaking of uh, Coach Nymeyer, uh legend, 32 seasons um, as head coach, NFCA Hall of Fame, um, 12 um, Women's College World Series appearances and over 1,300 wins. Um, Haley, can you talk to me about playing for uh, Coach Nymeyer? What was it like um, being there during that time and um, such a prolific time for, for Cal softball? 100%. Um, it was, I think, for me, looking back 15 years later on my experience, you couldn't have appreciated Coach as much then as you do now. And I learned so much from her as a human and she was the coach for me. I mean, she allowed all of us to be ourselves. And that was what drew me into Cal when I was deciding between different colleges and, and what was the best fit for me. Coach Nymeyer's openness and how welcoming she was and just the vibe of the team, everybody had each other's back and it, it felt like a family. And, you know, she just, she was quiet in a lot of ways. I mean, she wasn't, she was very passionate, but she wasn't necessarily a yeller in the sense, but, you know, we all respected her. We all knew her expectations and we all gave it all for her. And, and again, in hindsight, she just, she taught us all so much and it was tremendous to be able to play for her. Kaleo, can you speak about um, kind of going off of what Haley said? And she was always this calm uh, from the other dugout, calm, confident, just really great energy at third. Um, and what what can you say about Coach Nymeyer and your time there? Um, she did put a lot of heart and soul. And like Haley said, she allowed us to be us. Um, I know I was pretty wild and she sometimes had to put a leash on me, but, um, you know, she helped, she, she was one of them that gave me a chance and helped me grow as a person. So I have a lot to thank for her for that, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry. I get so nervous talking guys. <laughs> um. <laughs> I have a funny Kaleo story. Kaleo, when we were filming that, that uh, movie, Kaleo was playing catcher and turned around. The How Do You Know movie with Reese Witherspoon. Kaleo playing catcher turns around. I'm diving into home. This is like, I think, four or five years after uh, college. I dive into home. Here's Kaleo in the catching gear. Turns around like this is the College World Series. Turn around. That hits me in the face. I come up literally blood everywhere. Oh gosh, I they stop that. filming. Like stop the set. Like, like medics come out. I mean, I literally just bit my lip. Like, like, yeah, oh, yeah. Still so that's sorry. Like, yeah. Always like I'm like oh, that's Kaleo. Like yeah, that's, just, that's how Kaleo is. She's always on. All over the place. But that is I always remember that about you. Oh. And always playing full on hard all the time. Like hundred percent. Um, so we're just saying reel it back in. That's like <laughs> the, oh, it's full on Kaleo. Yeah, um, I'm still sorry about that one. <laughs> oh, don't worry. It's the best story. It's one of the best stories I've ever, I uh, love it. Uh, but that's, when I think of that, I think about how hard you play the game and every time you're out in center and that ball was hit, uh, we were sure that you were going to catch it. There's just this fire about you, this um, tenacity 
um, and a pleasure to play against. I mean, I'm like, oh, Kaleo, she's like dropped the bomb, like doing all this stuff. But um, thank you for being here, Kaleo. I think you're doing great. And I love that you've got a thousand shoes behind you. <laughs> Thanks. You all want to know. Vicki, <laughs> uh, can you speak a little bit about Coach? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Um, you know, I, I actually transferred from a, a community college before I played at Cal. So I played at West Valley College for a year and then transferred. And I always say I owe so much to Coach. She, she gave me my chance. You know, I was one of those athletes that didn't get recruited that very heavily out of high school. I, um, you know, I had a couple options, but I really wasn't ready to go away from home. And if it wasn't for coach, there's no way that I would have played all the way to the level that I played. And, um, you know, just, she gave me my chance. What can I say? I mean, she's all, um, been there for her athletes. You know, she always made sure we had the best uniforms and the best gear. And she just really, um, you know, we, we knew that, that um, when we played with her, that we were going to get to play our game. And um, that was something that, you know, I mean, look, we, we went to the World Series. Me, I, I got to go three years. Um, even 2005, we were there. It's when they moved to Super Regionals. <laughs> but, but um, you know, so, so I, I got to, to have an experience because of her. Great, thank you. So now, fast forward. Now we're gonna we're gonna go. The rest of us are gonna talk about now the current head coach. So we've we've talked about um, Coach Nymeyer, and now we're gonna talk about Chelsea and um, how she is this name, the head coach at Cal. She's not up there yet, but she's on her way. Um, so Alex, talk to me about the succession of, of Cal softball. So we're we're now we're in 2004 and now we're in 2020 and we've got coach Diane Neymar she's been there the whole time and now uh, Chelsea's been named the the next head coach how are the alumni feeling about uh, this decision honestly I think we're pumped I feel like there couldn't be a, a another like a better person as the follow-up you know just to continue the legacy because Neymar has laid such a beautiful, powerful, awesome foundation, and we couldn't be more grateful for what she's done, not only as a coach in our sport, um, what she's done just at the university in general with her athletes, with not to say the little that we had at Cal, but we made the most with what we had, and we were grateful for it. Um, and so her carrying that to this point, and I mean, Chelsea being able to play for her, Chelsea being the wonderful athlete she was, the great teammate she was. I mean, she showcased her heart right here saying that she took the loss upon herself, right? Because she didn't do that for her team. And so if that doesn't speak volumes to the coach that she's going to be and, and just paving the way for the future in our sport just to come, um, I mean, I just think, gosh, I mean, my girls, like, they're gonna, I mean, they don't, they don't know Nymeyer, right? Like they're too little, but they're gonna know Spence, you know? And I just, I don't know. I just, I'm just pumped. I was so happy to hear um, the news when I found out just a little bit ago. And it was just like, yes, like, let's go. I need to get back to, to California and like see a game. Cause I haven't been there in like 15 years. <laughs> already signed all your guys's, uh uh, children, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. And Ronnie, how about you? Uh, talk to me about um, Chelsea as a head coach. What were your thoughts? Uh, I was just thinking that they are incredibly lucky to have you. We are incredibly lucky to have you. The university is incredibly lucky to have you because you will bring such passion and knowledge about the game and um, I feel like I can certainly say that you've probably forgot more softball than most people have like ever known. So, um, cause you just know so much about the game. Um, and I love that about you. So, um, I do have like an old, uh, go bears, an old, uh, coach story though, that I do remember like one of my favorite ones. And some of you guys may, um, may or may not remember, but, uh, it was, we had just finished playing, 
I think it was Oregon State, and we got our asses kicked. And it was a game that we should have won. We're driving back to Eugene, and I remember Coach had given us, like, a total chewing, like, chewing out after the game. We're all depressed riding back on the bus to Eugene, and she sees, like, this ice cream shop. And you guys remember this? <laughs> we, like, we pull off, and I'm like, where are we going? And, like, she's like, I'm buying ice cream for everyone. And uh, Dairy Queen? Was it Dairy yeah. Queen? It was a dairy, I think it was a Dairy Queen. It was a Dairy Queen. Yeah. It was, like, my favorite, like, probably one of my favorite stories about Coach. And because uh, it was just, it kind of went to, like, her, all right, like, we had a bad game. Let's, like, let's forget about it and let's move on. And, like, tomorrow's a new day. And um, and I think we ended up playing Oregon the next day and we, like, we killed them. So, um, it was awesome. And I know that you're going to bring like that passion, but you're also going to bring, um, that understanding and that, uh, like you're going to bring the, the fun back to the, to the program. So I'm excited. I'm really excited. I'm pumped. So. Let's go. I want to go now, right now. Yeah. No kidding. Lindsay. I was just going to piggyback on that, that I think, um, coach's greatest strength was the ability to keep us loose. Um, that was what made us so successful. And I think looking um, at the past and then moving forward, thinking about the future and the legacy with Chelsea, I think she has definitely the ability to keep a team loose. So it's exciting. We're, as alumni, we're all really, really excited to see um, kind of like a, a new chapter. So we're, we're stoked. Go Bears. <laughs> Kelly, do you have anything to add? Oh, I'm I'm so excited to see what you do, Chelsea. Um, when I heard, I was like, she is the person with the passion. She has the drive. She's going to whip this, these girls in shape. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm really hoping with the, um, you know, with the transition that we can um, kind of focus on the past too, um, kind of bring the alumni together a little more. Um, I know in the last 15 years, 16 years, I've probably been there five times. Um, so, you know, I want to, um, I'm excited to see what you do, and I know you're going to do well, um, and, and I wish you all the best. You know, this is a dream come true. You guys know that this has been my, my end goal. Like, I'm a passionate Cal Bear. I mean, all of us here are. Uh, I bleed blue and gold. I've always, you know, coached in um, – in hopes that one day I put myself in a perfect position to get this job. Um, so I stay with coach white for so long is cause he's such a great coach and a pitching coach, uh, for that matter, to make sure that I could oversee pitching. You know, I, I feel like, um, I can oversee a pitching coach really well right now, but you know, it's a dream come true, but it's, it's just the start, you know, you know, this is just the start. It's not the end. And so like, I can't wait to, um, you know, have, have what we, we, what we can do as alumni and, um, you know, and, and come together. And I've already had, I don't know if you guys saw, but, you know, Ronnie Nelson came and talked to our team, uh, you know, with Jazz Jackson about what's going on in America right now with social justice and, you know, come together and, 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 you know, tell stories, you know, and, um, just, I really think it's important for them to know their history, Tara. That's why you're doing this. Like we need to know our history so, you know, we can, um, you know, pay homage to what, what who, the people who've been before us. It's pretty cool. I'm excited. Very well, well said, Chelsea. I think, um, you know, it's great to just be on a call with, with everybody. I mean, I wasn't obviously on your team, but I still feel like right at home, like it's just great to, to sit and chat about softball and life. And um, speaking of pitching coaches, I wrote this down. Chelsea, have you chosen your pitching coach over there yet or any of your staff? You know, I can't tell you yet. I guess not even now, you <laughs> okay, know. But you know, who do you think, who do you think, Christina, who do you think that uh, Chelsea should have as her pitching coach? Um, she's we've talked a little bit so I can't say anything either <laughs> well there's three things that coaches need to do right you need to be able to 
tell them what to do, like how to do it. You need to be able to show them what to do and also get them to feel it. You know, and those, those three things are really important for me to hire uh, coaches. Um, I want, I want a hitting coach that can still bang on them. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, you can't do it. I'm going to show you how I hit the ball out of this park, you know, and there's nothing worse as a student athlete to get beat by your coach, you know, and I'm going to, we're going to beat them. You know, it doesn't, they don't have to be, you know, um, the most youngest or whatever, but I'll tell you this, it's really important for me to hire coaches that can be able to show. It's really important. Okay. So we'll stay tuned for that. You'll let us know when, when that's happening. So no, no like hints at all. Not, not zero. Okay. Even to the fact when I got the job, I didn't tell anybody. Like Chelsea all the things that me. came out, it was like Chelsea punked me. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> tell him. Yeah. Tell him. <laughs> like through the whole hiring process, Chelsea and I and Danny were talking like nonstop every day, and so I I think it was the day they announced it. Mo Kristen Morley wrote me and said that he heard from Derek Astor that they were going to make the announcement that day. So I'm like, okay, he's in the inn. He knows everybody. Okay. And so she's saying, yeah, he thinks it's going to be um, one of the other candidates because like whatever reason or whatever. And so like, I find this out. Chelsea hasn't heard anything in like over a week. So I call Danny and tell him and he's like, well, you know I mean, it is what it is. You know how Danny gets. And so I called Chelsea and she's like, wow, that's all she says. That's it. And then like two hours later, they make the announcement. I don't hear from Chelsea. I hear from like this reporter friend of mine, cause I'm doing some lessons. So I'm not even checking anything. He's like, did you hear? I was like, did I hear what? I was like, Chelsea got it. And I was like, what? And, like the middle of my lesson. And I'm like, hold on. So I like text Chelsea and I don't hear back. And like, she's busy, obviously. And I call Danny and he's screaming. And then Chelsea calls me probably like an hour later. She's like, yeah, I knew when you texted me today, but I was just like messing with you because I could. Thanks, well, it was dude. like a perfect opportunity. And then I just couldn't, I was, I thought about I was not her. mad at all. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to reel her in. I'm like, oh, wow. That, that's terrible. Dang it. Or something like that. Or I'm like, well, so no, I think it was just wow. It was just one word. It was wow. <laughs> Or okay or something. But that's all it was. Cracking up. <laughs> so everybody's super excited about Cal's future. Um, you've got one of your own um, at the helm. And how about this? There's Kelly I, Heather Tar, yep. Coach Hogue, Amy Hogue. Um, who else we got? Jess Alistair. Alistair, Chelsea Spencer. Five out of eight, and I'll tell you, either Kaylin or Tar Taryn Moet's next after Kendrea. So that's six coaches in the Pac-12 maybe that will be at their alma mater. And I just think there's just such a different investment when you, when you have an ownership and excitement that, you know, that that brings. So back to pack. Back to back the pack. You know, it's like we're like New Zealand and Australia. You know, you, 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 you. You're mad at each other all the time. We're like, I don't like you. I don't like you. But when you play the other conferences, we're all like, we back the pack. We're, we're all sisters around here. You know what I'm saying? We're the conference of champions, you know? Pac-12 wins championships. And, and when they're in the, you know, in the World Series, we're, we're backing them. So uh, that's how I really feel about our conference. And I, I'm, I'm just super thankful and humbled through this whole process. And, you know, I hope, you know, that I can make everybody proud, not only just j you guys, but the people who hired me and, and then, you know, my mom and my dad and my family, I just want to make proud, you know, and that's what I, I want to do. So thank you guys. Well, we wish you the best of luck from D1 Softball, um, NCAA, uh, Kelly, Lindsay, Christina, Haley, Alex, Ronnie, Chelsea, Vicky, Kaleo, Thank you all so, so, so much um, for being a part of this roundtable. It's been a little bit different than our other ones, but super enjoyable and love hearing your stories. 
if anybody wants to say one last hurrah, Lindsay, do you want to say goodbye? Do you want to take us out? Do we have a cheer? Do we have cow bears cheer that we can, somebody can lead us? Well, it looks like my husband, the babysitter, his time is up. Um, <laughs> perfect timing for bedtime routine. Um, but I just, um, thank you so much, everyone. I know it was like kind of a sh show to get everyone together, but I can't tell you how happy I am to see your faces, hear your words, and I'm so excited for the future. So is he. All right, with that, um, that concludes our fifth round table. Uh, thank you so much and go Bears. Go Bears, thank you Tara. Go Bears, thank you. Bears, thank thank you. you. Bye everybody. Bye everybody. Bye everyone.